What is Cafe Mocha? Experts, celebrities. Hey, this is John Legend. Yours truly is This is Fantasia. I am Ian LeVance. Hey, everybody, it's your girl Tamar Braxton. Music and features from a woman's perspective. Intriguing conversation. The Swag Award. Espresso. The MC Light Mix. Radio from a woman's perspective. What flavor are you, baby? This is Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha. I'm Angelique. I'm MC Light. Can a woman raise a boy to be a man? I know a lot of single moms out there are trying. Joining us this weekend, we've seen her play in the WNBA. You've seen her son play for the Denver Nuggets. And you've seen her on her new series, Moms Got Game on Own. Pamela McGee joins us today to talk about raising boys on Cafe Mocha. I'm sorry, baby. It's Cafe Mocha. I'm Angelique. I'm MC Light, and this weekend's topic, How to Raise a Man. Uh-oh, on the line, she's got her series on OWN called Mom's Got Game. Former coach and player in the NBA, her son is the center for the Denver Nuggets. Mm-hmm. Pamela McGee joins us. Can a woman raise a boy to be a man? Well, I mean, obviously, I think that we do our sons an injustice when we say that a woman can't raise a boy to be a man because there's a lot of successful black men who were raised by strong women. Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of them. So the question is, if it is possible to do it, how do we do it? Well, and I I think that one of the issues is, and I mean, I had to, I took it personally when I had a a son. I just felt that it was my responsibility to raise a man child. Now, I think that somewhat, I am somewhat different than most women because I feel like I am somewhat androgynous. I didn't grow up with other females. I grew up with guys. I didn't grow up with dolls. I grew up on playing on the playground with guys playing basketball. So I somewhat missed a lot of, I didn't, my mom put me in charm school when I was about 15 (laughs) but before that I really hadn't developed as a woman until I was about 17 so my whole younger life I grew up with guys and so I got to respect men I got to work with men I got to play with men I really understood their dynamic not to say that that I had more of an advantage than other women I'm just saying I understood that culture because I had grew up with men now I, I personally believe that every young man if they have an ideal situation in a utopia society they should have a mother around a father. So I'm not going to sit up here and say that, you know, we want um, our sons not to have a man in the household. But as Darwin's theory of evolution, if he is not there, I did not allow that to say, oh, you're not going to be successful because there's not a man there. That That's my position. We can't allow our sons to have excuses. I think that um, if we are to raise men, I think the best thing and the thing that I, I say to raise a man, we have to hold men accountable. Uh, a man told me once, changed my life, what he said to me when I figured out that I had a man child. He said, uh, black women, and in, 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 in mostly women, always say that black men are doing this, black men ain't doing that, my baby daddy ain't doing that. He says, but the reality is a black man came from a woman. Mm-hmm. Hello? So that lets me up mm-hmm. because... If a black man is not doing something, that's somebody's son. That's somebody's husband. That's somebody's brother. When men cheat on women, they go and sleep in some other woman's bed. Mm -hmm. So um, to raise a man, I just believe that we have to hold our sons accountable. Because to be a man, you have to be accountable. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are talking to Pamela McGee. Her series is on OWN. Mom's Got Game. More on the way. It's Cafe Mocha. We're on the line with Pamela McGee. I mean, have we thought about a book, How to Raise a Man? Oh, of course. Okay, that's on yeah, the way. Raising a man child. And I'm not saying that I have the solution. All I'm saying is through my research, through my struggles, mm-hmm. I just want to give a, a, a shout out to other women to say, this worked for me. And I think that sometimes as African Americans, we at one point were, were a village. I mean, we were a village. We, we supported each other. If I had a problem, I could create a village and I had that support system. Mm-hmm. Well, now through technology, through television, through, you know, social media, through uh, technology and iPods and everything else, we've become very isolated. So I found myself just hurting because we just didn't have those resources. I guess my thing is, I don't feel like the moms hold the sons accountable as they should. I think that 
we have to do a better job of that in general. But how do you, as a mom, say you're messing up? Get out. Well, Go I get a job. Start, I mean, I'm going to tell you what I did. I think it starts, I threw my son out the house at nine years old. Because <laughs> at nine years old, he was starting to look at me almost eye to eye. His head started to come to my eyes. And so as a result, he was, I say he was trying to exercise his warrior self. And he raised his voice at me and he raised up on me. I said, oh, oh, we got a problem here. Mm. You must be a man. Mm. I said, well, you got to get out of my house because you must be a man if you think you're going to talk like that to me and disrespect me. So I threw him out the house. And uh, he was on the front porch, and he said, uh, now, see, this is the village. So he said, oh, that's all right. You can put me out. I'm going over to my granny house. I said, well, hold up. Here she is on the phone. And my mother, so I said, here she is on the phone. Ironically, she just called me. Here, you can talk to her. And she says, oh, no, 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 son. I got You got a problem. If you can't respect your mother, you definitely can't come to my house. All right. Mm. She said, he says, well, granny, where should I go? She says, well, obviously, you're a man. You'll figure it out. <laughs> That's right. We are talking to Pamela McGee, How to Raise a Man. Mm. More coming up on Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha. You know her from Mom's Got Game. If you're a WNBA fan, you know her from the L.A. Sparks. Pamela McGee. And you know her son, too, plays for the Denver Nuggets. Um, We've got Pamela McGee on the line. And one of the things that I wanted to ask you was, did you hear that uh, Magic Johnson's company just bought the Sparks? I'm so excited about that. I'm just, just uh, that he saw the need. We really need to make sure that we maintain a team in the Los Angeles. This area. So I'm so ecstatic that the, the Magic Johnson Group bought the L.A. Sparks. That's a good asset to his company, and we definitely need that presence as far as me being the inaugural, you know, setting the pillar for the WNBA, being in the WNBA. So, yeah, I'm totally excited about that. And, and one thing I wanted to just briefly make a comment. You know, the young man, the football player, came out and said, hey, I'm gay. Draft me anyway, please. There's this whole movement now of coming out with athletes. Any thoughts on that? Having been a professional athlete, do you feel there'll be backlash? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and you know, it'll be interesting because... By and large, there are, we will see what that plays out to be. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, it, it's, I'm, I'm an all inclusive person. Obviously, I've played with very women who are bisexual, trisexual, homosexual. <laughs> Freaks. Being a WNBA player, I just right. think we all need to be inclusive to just love on people. Right. So it will be interesting, though, because that's the last domain, you know, that we, we you know, when Jason came out, that's the last domain for us to see. Jason is not an active player. You know, I don't know what it'll look like if we if they draft an active player who's going into the league and saying he's gay. So right. we'll see how that, that pans out. Okay. Because there's a difference in in behind the scene locker rooms. People can say a whole lot on Twitter. They can say a whole lot outside. But when they get into those locker rooms, that's a whole different animal. Mm. All right. Well, we'll so, you know, by I, I kind of, I don't like people who play one thing when it's for the media. Mm-hmm. But then you go in that locker room. I want to see you in the locker room. I, right. You know, that's, that's a very homophobic arena. The football, that's the last domain. So it will definitely be interesting on see who will say the things out on media and Twitter and then I want to see him actually suit up in a locker room right Mm. you know so that's all right. what I want to see I don't want to hear the hype and all of that I want to see him in a uniform and in a locker room all right Pamela <laughs> McGee mom's got game on own how do people reach you my Twitter is Pamela McGee 34 at Twitter and JaVale McGee 34 is my son's Twitter well thank you so much for your hey, presence thanks for having me I love you guys we love Have you back your people call my people yeah <laughs> for sure ain't this what you came for It's Cafe Mocha. I'm Angelique. Coming up this hour, we've got your spring beauty tips. Maya Brown of Black Opal held it down in the Cafe Mocha Style Lounge, beautifying the women of the ATL. I'll talk to her. Plus, trying to cover that gray, well, Bo Tally has tips. My baby won't talk to me. It's Cafe Mocha in the Cafe. 
Cafe Mocha Style Lounge. Black Opal did my makeup. Yes. Miss Maya. Hi, how are you doing? Good. The face is beat. The lipstick is wearing down, so I need you to touch me up. Oh, but we can hook you up. Yes. Let's talk about the products and what people can expect when they come to Black Opal. You know, with Black Opal, what we are really known for is true to tone shade matching. So when a woman of color comes to Black Opal, she's going to get the perfectly matched foundation, powder, and concealer for her skin. We believe in that enhancing true beauty for women of color. Now, last night, Danina did me, and she put me on some red lips. And let me, let me explain something. Ladies, you know about black women and red lipstick, and it can go awry very quickly. <laughs> Danina picked out some stuff. I heard you were even like, what's that? I was. I was like, well, what's she? What's that? And she was like, it's vampy red. And I was like, vampy red looks so different on different skin tones. And I saw it last night on you, and I was like, I got to get that color. I got to get it, too, by the way. <laughs> oh, oh, we will make sure you get it. I have a bag for you all right so compliments of black opal but that's what i love about black opal because we are true to tone shade matching it will complement any skin tone and it's a different hue almost for everybody all right well we thank you so much for coming out for doing this i mean they've been doing sean pan around they've been doing makeovers all day i mean things are winding down now but the beautiful women came out and just got they came in party and they left gorgeous because black opal was was hooking it up. Well, we have enjoyed ourselves immensely. Thank you to Cafe Roke Mocha Radio. Thank you for general treatment. And we are so happy to have been a part of this wonderful Mind, Body, and Soul Expo. Thank you. Thank you. My homie. Yes. We just found out. We just found out. We know my best friend. They were in school together in North Carolina a &T, So she like super homie. Yep, she's my sorority sister, Pamela Harrigan. We were both accounting majors. Mayor so, you know, we run deep at Aggie T. Aggie Fry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> for their gray hair product line. So just to be out here and be surrounded by so many motivating women is just inspiring and it just motivates me to continue doing what I'm doing. And now when it comes to covering gray hair, what, what is the art to that? Because I see people try all the time and you go, whoop. <laughs> for me, um, you gotta find the right products for gray hair because gray hair is very brittle, very dry. Um, it, it has nothing to it. It's just dead, honestly. Um, so you got to find the right products. I do use Gentle Treatment, right. and they have a product called Yellow Out, because I am a, a lady who, d I don't dye my hair, but I process it. I do wear a perm. So with that, sometimes those chemicals can turn your gray hair yellow. Sure. So they have this product called Yellow Out, and it is phenomenal. So okay. I can still rock my gray and feel young and sexy and not be ashamed of it. You are both young and sexy and I nothing wish. to be ashamed of. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I'm looking at you. Young and sexy. I'm going to take that. How about that? Take, exactly. Take the compliment already, Bo. Where can people find you? Wow. I am on, uh, everyone's doing the social media stuff. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram at I am Miss Bo Tally, which is spelled I-A-M-M-S-B-O-T-A-L-L-E-Y. That's my Instagram. That's my Twitter. That's okay. my Facebook. <laughs> on the Gentle Treatment website. Okay. I do a blog on there weekly. Um, it's called What a Grown Woman Knows. Yes. So I'm blogging about what a grown woman knows, all things gray and everything else. So you can also find me there. What's, what's uh, one of your recent blog tips? Um, my latest one was just talking about gray hair and, and just basically how to maintain it okay. and how to still be sexy with it. Everybody wants to dye it the minute they see one piece of gray in their head. And I'm trying to encourage women to be yourselves. Don't try to uh, conform yourself to what everybody else is doing. Be proud of how God made you, whether you're gray young or gray old. Okay. Rock it. Find the right haircut, the right style, and rock it. I love it. Good yeah. to meet you. Thank nice you so much for too. coming out. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Thank you. No problem. I got you. Your Cafe Mocha Espresso is being brought to you by Black Opal for every shade of beauty. I'm Angelique, and we begin by congratulating Quasi Unneen of Long Island for getting accepted to eight Ivy League schools. Appreciation and thankfulness for everyone who helped you, and all your teachers, 
helping you with your grades and whatnot, all the way down to your counselor, and then lastly, of course, your family, parents, for all the support they do. Meanwhile, Judge Joe Brown talks about his trip to jail and what landed him there. I was shaking hands down there and taking pictures and signing autographs. What I did was not what I usually do. It wasn't even heated. On a scale of one through ten, this is like a three. <laughs> and it's a return of the soul, man, with Cedric the Entertainer. Well, you know, this year we premiered live, which was awesome. Like, yeah. and so we did the show while it was happening. Was so it nerve wracking? It was because, yeah. you know, anything that you did wrong was going to be like captured right on camera. But, and the thing I have about being on a TV show with a wife is mm. that she really starts to believe she's my wife. She'll like, you know, pick up all the scripts and then did, when you get your car washed, get my car washed. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, you know, I have a real wife. <laughs> <laughs> the Soul Man, Wednesday night to 1030 on TV. Land. I'm Angelique. The Espresso is brought to you by Black Opal for every shade of beauty. This is Cafe Mocha. Know what you're listening to? <laughs> Cafe, Cafe Mocha. Mocha. Oh, yes, it is Cafe Mocha. One experience all over the globe. We are being heard right now. This is the light mix where we take you back. Good times. Faith happens to be a personal friend. I wish her well. She's working on a new project right now. God bless, sister. Keep it happening. It's Cafe Mocha Radio. Oh, yes, it's the light mix right now. You are rocking with Cafe Mocha Radio. Yours truly, MC Light. I got the ladies Angelique and Lonnie Love on standby. This is how we get busy every weekend. I'll take you back. Let's go. Come on. It's Cafe Mocha Radio. One love, one agenda, one experience. Oh, I'm making stuff up on the fly. This is MC Light. Got the crew in waiting, but be sure to download the new app, Cafe Mocha Radio. Visit our website, Cafe Mocha. Oh, I'm so excited. Cafe Mocha Radio.com. Spitting on myself. All right, so represent for us. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. We are, in effect, rocking the social networking game all together. Please. It is Cafe Mocha Radio. It's Cafe Mocha, and you are in the midst of the light mix. Yours truly, MC Light, here with Angelique and Lonnie Love. It is Cafe Mocha Radio, spreading the love all around the country. Please be sure to look us up. Send us emails, tweets, Facebook. It's all love. The finest things. <laughs> it's Cafe Mocha. This is the light mix. Just want to say big up mind, body, and soul. Everybody that came out to the convention center for the Women, Wealth, and Relationship Conference. It was on. So make sure you look up CafeMochaRadio.com for more information on where we will be the next time out. God bless. If I had a choice and I don't Wrapping up the show with the Light Mix starring MC Light. If you weren't able to make it to Atlanta for our first annual Salute Her ceremony, the whole inspiring event is online. You'll get to hear Terry J. Vaughn talk about her rise to stardom, Frederica Whitfield. Really good stuff. So go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Cafe Mocha Radio. The whole crew's back next weekend. We'll see you then. I'm gonna make a change. Cafe Mocha is a production of Miles Ahead Broadcasting in association with Cumulus Media Networks. Executive producer Sheila Eldridge, writer and producer Angelique Perrin. For comments and more information, visit Cafe Mocha Radio. Radio.com.